Mount Katahdin. It's Maine's tallest mountain. And it's in Baxter State Park, which is really just over that ridge there. Uh, I'm just on the outside of the park on the west side on what's called the Golden Road. It's a major logging highway, a dirt road that goes from Millinocca all the way over to Quebec, about 80 to 90 miles away. There are lots of big roads off that and branch off into the northern forest, which makes it a great route to get inside the forest and do some serious birding. Been heading out the Golden Road for ooh, 20 some odd miles, a little more than that, and about to make the turn onto the Telos Road. The Telos Road goes due north. It's another major logging road, and this one goes way north, uh, all the way up to Chamberlain Lake, the headwaters of the Allagash. Coming up on the Telos checkpoint, this is where we enter the North Main Woods Territory. Uh, it's about three million acres run as an association. They take care of all the uh, security for people entering the private forest here and, and also taking care of the campgrounds and uh, all the recreational facilities that are available up here. You know, there's a lot of different side roads. We have the big arteries, the Golden Road, the Telos Road that I'm on right now. We've got all these different arteries, but uh, the side roads all have their interesting distinguishing features. You know, different habitats in different places. This is such a rich area. You get into Maine during the uh, songbird season, especially if you get up in the north woods, and all the noise drives you crazy. Just standing here in this one spot, just get out of the car. Northern water thrush, American red start, blue headed vireo, alder flycatcher. There's Swainson's thrush calling from just behind the edge of these bushes. Goes a yellow rump warbler. Yellow belly flycatcher, got a Canada warbler, ruby crown kinglet, of course, white throated sparrow, they're all over the place. Well, that's kind of lucky. The uh, blackback woodpecker took over the nest from last year's American three-toed woodpecker. I've not actually seen them do that before, but there he is. This is black spruce. Black spruce likes its roots wet. It uh, tends to like cool, damp places, as opposed to uh, red spruce, which is all over the mountainsides and better drawing soil, and white spruce, which likes uh, sunny uh, edges. But black spruce is really gold for the boreal species that I always look for. Um, you can tell it because it is dark, but it's also like lollipops. Uh, most of the branches below the tops of the trees are pretty much denuded. And so once they get mature, there's a lot of foliage at the top, and then not much else. And uh, look for rough bark because uh, we have more balsam fir and that tends to be smooth barked. Spruce is rough bark. So when trees are dead and dying, that's what the woodpeckers want, black-backed and American three-toed because there's a lot of grubs and stuff on a dead and dying tree. And so they'll flick the bark off that. And if it's recent damage, the bark underneath is gonna be pretty red. Uh, it grays as it gets older. So if you find a lot of disturbance and the bark looks fairly fresh, that's what you're looking for for signs of black or three-toed woodpecker in the area. For instance, Chebec, 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 least fly catcher. The black throated blue warbler right behind me in a northern parula or perula, your choice, uh, right behind it. Chestnut side of warbler across the road. Oh, there's the black throat of blue right next to me.
My first time down this road. Good mature black spruce. God, I love the Maine forest. Boreal chickadee up there somewhere. That's one of the things I really like is when I can hear olive-sided flycatcher and yellow-bellied flycatcher at the same time. This is a dust bath. Uh, spruce grouse and rough grouse both do it. This is an area that is clearly spruce grouse habitat. And so they'll come out in the road, they'll dust themselves off pretty good, and if it's a fresh one, really powdery, hasn't been rain-soaked in recent days, chances are pretty good the grouse is around somewhere. So that's a clue to look for. Spruce grouse, of course, are known for eating spruce needles. That's what they subsist on all winter. Once uh, spring and summer get here, their diet will vary just a little bit. They'll start eating more bugs, a little fruit when they can find it. Later in the year, they switch to tamarack. Tamarack, also called hackmatack or larch. It's this stuff, really feathery, all over the North Maine woods. It's a deciduous conifer, which means uh, about the beginning of November, this is going to turn bright yellow and drop its needles for the winter. Well, grouse love this in autumn, so Generally speaking, if you've got spruce, mossy forest floor, a good place for a dust bath, and tamarack, it's a good habitat for spruce grouse. Bear poop. Actually, over the last mile, this is the third pile I found in the road, which I guess answers the question about whether they do it in the woods. You know, that's the problem with birding in northern Maine. The scenery is just too distracting. 